worldwide market growth for information technology is 2 trillion today. In five years, it will be 8 trillion. And by 2023, the software market will exceed a quarter of a trillion dollars. It's continuously accelerating at a rapid rate. And the early part of the 21st century have brought about a change in the world of IT. Big data, AI and IoT. AI is happening now and applications exceed imagination. I attended the Intel AI DEF CON in San Francisco as an Intel partner. And I witnessed amazing AI advancements from top companies and experts from across the industry. Let's check out some of the developments from Intel AI Developers Conference. AI is transforming healthcare applications, turning patient data into health insights, helping to give patients the right treatments at the right times. Image recognition can analyze high content cellular images in the drug discovery process for pharmaceutical companies, reducing human error and shortening the time to it takes to discover a drug that can address a targeted disease. Academy Award winning physical animator James Jacobs, who worked on the Avatar, describes how machine learning can simulate the biomechanics of animated characters for realism. The Corva software is a offline sort of uh, physics simulation software where we can accurately simulate the mechanic, you know, the biomechanics of characters. And uh, then th this is used then as uh, a way to generate really pristine training data for uh, AI process. AI is being used to create music and alter the way that musical composition takes shape. So what you guys can see um, on the top of the screen, the music is incoming. Um, through one hot encoding over each time slice, which then generates, um, which then the music flows through a sequence of LSTM cells, then generates um, the output that you guys can visualize in blue. After that, some something is done, which triggers the AI guitar sound that you can hear and visualize on the screen in red. Ferrari wanted to improve their ability to identify and track cars in real time and provide better customer experience for fans who want to follow their favorite drivers. Let's take a closer look at how machine learning is making all of this possible. The classification of the driver is just based on the car appearance. So since all the cars are actually the exact same make and model, like you would want when you're racing against someone, we have to go beyond just the car shape and look at the individual paint schemes of the cars. So this could be as subtle as trying to tell the difference between an all-white car and an all-white car with yellow side mirrors. And you can imagine when you're trying to do this from a drone that's 100 feet up in the air and the car's moving at 150 miles an hour, it's pretty hard to distinguish those small features. Drivers like to change the appearance of their cars frequently between races or even just before a race. So instead, what we had to do was go with something that's more of a few shot learning approach where we train uh, something called a matching network that learns to compare images directly rather than memorizing the appearance of cars. Supervised learning is creating about 99% of recent search of economic value in AI. An example is in fake news detection, where in a paragraph of news text a model can be found that has low prediction errors on a particular training set. So a few examples include things like fake news detection, right? So X was some body of text of, let's say, a news article, and Y was a label that says, is this fake news, yes or no? Then given a collection of such XY pairs, we want to find a model H that has low prediction error on this training set. Transfer learning. If a radiologist is trying to perform X-ray diagnostics and doesn't have a lot of X-ray images in their database, then maybe they can use the technology in learning cat, dog and people recognition for identifying normal terrestrial objects and transfer the X-ray radiologist diagnosis. Unsupervised learning is learning from unlabeled data. Rather than having both X and Y, you can just give the machine unlabeled data and have it learn. Reinforcement learning in gaming. If you simulate an environment, you can get an infinite amount of experience and then you can get an infinite amount of data. 
It's also demonstrated in robotics. And here's imitation learning, an extension of supervised learning. Okay, so here's just one example um, in terms of modeling basketball trajectories. There's a few different ways you can think about doing this. Here's just one simple case. So the state is basically the location of all the players in the ball on the court. And let's suppose we're modeling the green player. So the green, the green lines indicate the trajectories of the players on offense, the red lines indicate the trajectories of the players on defense, and the orange is the ball. So the bolded green player is the player in question. We want to be able to predict the sequence of actions that this player takes uh, in response to the state, sequence of state which is the locations of all the other players. According to Intel's VP and general manager, AI products group, Naveen Rao, here is the next 50 years of AI. The next 50 years are going to be about uh, servicing data, pulling uh, information out of data, making it useful, and making decisions based upon data. We have just scratched the surface on how to really do this. We've figured out how to store data, but really the next few years are going to be about that. And then, whatever the next platform is, today it's silicon, it was, it was uh, relays, and it was mechanical devices before that. So I think the next frontier is also what we're investigating. We're doing lots of different things in our, in our lab's environment. I would like to thank Intel for the experiences at AI DEFCON. I'm Ronald Van Loon, and this is The Intelligent World. Enjoy this video? Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and get notifications of my new video.